Have you tried using Bitcoin lately, but your wallet is asking you to pay $30 in fees? Or maybe you set a transaction a week ago and it still hasn't arrived? Today I'll be covering how transaction fees work, why transaction fees have been high recently and why they might be high in the future, how to avoid those high transaction fees, and finally what to do if your Bitcoin gets stuck using a low transaction fee. So what even is a Bitcoin transaction fee in the first place? Every time you send Bitcoin, you attach a fee and your transaction gets put into a bucket with everyone else who's trying to send Bitcoin right now. And that fee that you attach is basically a bribe to the miner to say, hey, if you include my transaction into the next block, I'll give you this fee. So if your transaction and my transaction are both in the bucket at the same time and you paid $5, but I paid $10, my transaction is going to get included before yours. So what's happening when fees are really, really high is that a bunch of people are trying to use the Bitcoin network all at the same time and they keep bidding up the price to get included in the next block. But so far this week has been a little bit different. The fees aren't coming because a bunch of people are trying to send Bitcoin transactions. The fees are coming from Bitcoin users who are trying to mint ordinal NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. Ordinals is a protocol that uses Bitcoin's latest upgrade called Taproot that allows NFTs and BRC20 smart contract tokens to be minted on the Bitcoin blockchain. So now our fees are not just competing with other people who are trying to send Bitcoin transactions. We're also competing with people who are trying to inscribe monkey pictures and meme coins onto the blockchain. And hardcore Bitcoiners are freaking out because ordinals and meme coins are stupid and everyone wants Bitcoin to be this super pure financial instrument that doesn't have any dumb stuff on top of it. But ultimately, because of how ordinals works, it's a lot more expensive to do this new stuff on top of the Bitcoin blockchain than it is to just simply send a transaction. And if it turns out there's really no economic value to all of this ordinals and BRC20 stuff, eventually the people minting these things on top of the Bitcoin blockchain are going to run out of money. And if they run out of money, the fees then would obviously come back down to the level where we're just sending normal transactions for the most part. Or maybe ordinals are the future of finance and all of us are just too dumb to see it and fees will be structurally higher from now on and it will be more expensive forever to send Bitcoin transactions. In either one of those futures, Bitcoin will survive. Or if it doesn't and it gets destroyed by monkey pictures and doggy doo-doo coins, then I guess it wasn't this super robust anti-fragile thing that we all thought that it was and it's better that we find that out now than 35 years from now when it's a lot bigger than it is today. At the peak, fees got up to around 650 sats per byte and around 450,000 unconfirmed transactions were in the mempool. And there was a block that was mined that had more Bitcoin in fees than it did from the block reward, which was pretty crazy. I think that's the first time that that's ever happened. And I think that it's something that's going to be happening a lot more going forward, especially as the next halving happens next year and cuts the block reward in half again. But current state, the transactions are back down to around 25 sats per byte. And there are only around 250,000 unconfirmed transactions. Ultimately going forward, if Bitcoin does does get more and more mass adoption like I and a lot of other people think that it will, this high fee situation is going to become a lot more common. So what can you do to avoid these high fees and continue to use the Bitcoin blockchain on a day-to-day -day basis? The first thing you can do to avoid the high fees is obviously just wait for the fees to go down. And you can check the current fee levels over at mempool.space and I'll have a link to that down in the description. The next thing you can do to avoid high fees is to use a layer two solution like the Lightning Network or Blockstream's Liquid Network. It seems likely to me that in the future, these layer two solutions are going to be the most common way that people interact with the Bitcoin network. And we're seeing glimpses of that future now as large companies in the space like Binance have been forced to start thinking about implementing the Lightning Network as these Bitcoin on-chain fees get higher and higher and higher. Because obviously as Binance processes withdrawals every day to its massive user base all over the world, it doesn't want to have to pay tons of money in fees to miners and it doesn't want to have to pass those costs on to you, the consumer. You'll still need to pay a miner fee to move your Bitcoin from Lightning to Main chain and back. But I think in the future, someone's going to write some software that does that for you in the most fee efficient way possible. You could think of that software it would be something like, okay, anytime the fees are below whatever this certain threshold is, move money from my checking account into my long-term savings account, where the checking account is sort of like your lightning wallet and the long-term savings account would be your on-chain physical Bitcoin. Depending on what wallet you're using, you could also set a custom fee threshold that you're willing to pay for your Bitcoin transaction. This way, your Bitcoin is only sent if the price that you're willing to pay for the transaction if that threshold is met. You need to be careful though when you're using a custom fee because your transaction could get stuck and depending on what wallet you're using, it could be hard to force that transaction to clear through the mempool. If your Bitcoin transaction does get stuck in unconfirmed status, there are three ways to get your Bitcoin transaction unstuck. The first way is called replace by fee. This is basically where you send out a transaction with super low fees, like hypothetically two sats per byte, and then your transaction never gets confirmed and you're anxious because you hypothetically 
literally just wound down your Casa multisig and you transferred like half your net worth at a really low fee and now it's just sitting there pending in the mempool. Not getting confirmed because some degenerate ordinal minters are ruining Bitcoin for you, but who would do that? And so with replace by fee, if you have that transaction sitting in the mempool at two sats per byte, you would be able to replace the fee and bump it up to something like 20 sats per byte or 30 sats per byte and force your transaction to get confirmed in the next block. You can sort of think of that as like a fee bump and the fee is coming behind the original transaction. The next option is called child pays for parent. This is the same situation. You have a two sats per byte transaction just sitting in the mempool and it's unconfirmed. This only works in the case where you're sending Bitcoin from one wallet you control to another wallet you control. The wallet you're sending to is the child wallet and the wallet you're sending from is the parent wallet. And so from the child wallet, you would be able to spend Bitcoin that hasn't arrived yet at a higher fee threshold to process both transactions to a third wallet that theoretically you would also control. That option is a little bit more complicated and I think most people will probably just use replace by fee most of the time. The third option is to wait for the mempool to completely purge your transaction, which usually takes around 14 days, and then just send your transaction again with higher fees. The issue is that not every wallet software supports all of these features. And so if your wallet doesn't support these features and you're serious about using Bitcoin and you plan to interact with a Bitcoin network over the long term, I highly recommend that you switch to a Bitcoin wallet that does support these features so that you can unstuck some of your transactions. I'll have a list of wallets that support these features down in the description. And as long as you have the private keys to your Bitcoin, you should be able to load that private key into any of these wallets and interact with these fee features over on the new wallet. Hopefully this video helped you guys better understand the fee situation of Bitcoin and all of this crazy ordinal stuff that's going on right now. If you guys found this content helpful, go down below and like the video and share it with your friends. And then leave a comment if you have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. Check out this video over here to learn more about Bitcoin. I love you all. See you next week.